Hello there, Ray here. Today I'd like to share with you guys my upgraded version of my simple Trident farm. We've been designing a lot of 1.13 farms on our stream, and just like the other farms, we went through a lot of different versions throughout the snapshots, including our Trident farm here. We started testing this design a couple weeks ago, and it seems pretty promising. A few snapshots back, they changed it so that zombies, when they fall into the water and drown, and they turn into the drown mob, those zombies will never have the ability to hold a trident. And they also changed it so that drowns themselves won't have a chance of dropping tridents unless you already find one that has holding one. And if you watch my snapshot review videos, I talked about how this is now going to change the way that we farm up drowns, and now we have to get the naturally spawned ones. So what I got here is a farm that uses your naturally spawned drowns that come from an ocean. And what we have I'm doing is getting attracted towards this villager here, which we have safely encased inside this glass. So they can't throw tridents out of him. And the drowns here will be attracted to this villager from a 32 meter distance, so out to those glass pillars there in the water. And if they come in range of that, then they're capable of seeing this villager, similar to like a zombie, and then they'll start pathfinding towards him. Eventually they'll come into this area where they'll kind of stand around, eventually push themselves over, and they'll come in contact, which is tripwire, which we have right here. And when they do that, then they'll be able to get pushed inwards, similar to this guy here. Because this tripwire updates this observer, which this observer updates this one, it comes down here and pushes this piston. You can see that the drowns are kind of bobbing in the water, and eventually bob high enough so they touch that tripwire, and then they'll get pushed inwards. Now, they might kind of get stuck around these corners, but eventually they will creep around the edges. And the player will be AFKing above this farm, so here we have a AFK spot, which the player can just go inside of, and then stand in AFK. And this location is 24 meters above the water surface there, that way we can have it so the drowns can spawn in really closely. But this also prevents the drowns from despawning. So mobs can spawn within 24 meters of the player, but they won't be able to despawn unless they are 32 meters away from the player. So once the drowns get in this little circular area here, they won't be able to despawn. And this way they can take their time in getting inside the portal and it won't really matter. We did a lot of testing with drowns on our Twitch stream and we found that they will spawn in too high water as well as they do not spawn above sea level, so you can't have a like, farm like way up in the air. And they can spawn at anywhere where there's two water, so you can see we're in here. They don't have to be at the floor of the ocean. And they can even spawn inside of stuff like kelp as well as seaweed. So having all this kelp being grown up isn't going to prevent their spawns from occurring. Now even if a drown is holding a trident, he'll only drop that trident if he is killed by player means. This means we cannot just have these drowns be killed by other means, such as like magma blocks. Instead they have to be killed by the player. So what we do is we have all the drowns go inside this nether portal, in which case they can be stored in the nether dimension, and that doesn't affect the overall spawn cap, as well as we don't have to try to store them here. They're all being safely stored over there in unloaded chunks. When you're done AFKing, you want to go over to the nether dimension and kill the drowns for their tridents. It's best that you build a second portal and don't go through this portal because this one will put you in with the drowns. So by putting a portal that is higher up than this one and linking it up, then when you go through this one, you shouldn't end up in the farm. So I have a portal up here, and then the farm portal is down there. And once you come down to your farm, you can knock out the portal blocks. This way the drowns won't try to get teleported back over into the overworld again. And you can see I just have the drowns kind of getting pushed both directions. And over here we have some vines in the wall, which will prevent them from taking max cramming. Same goes from this side. And they can just sit in there until they get killed. I got some hoppers underneath, as well as some chests. And from here you can swing at their feet without being attacked by their tridents. Um, you can see that I got a Looting 3, Unbreaking 3, Mending, Sweeping Edge 3, as well as Smite 5 Thor. And this is really good for killing drowns since they are undead. You want to get the Looting so that you can get more trains. And you can just swing at them. And I got some Hoppers which will be picking up the loot. And you get a lot of XP's as well. Unfortunately, the downside to this farm is that it is in 1.13. And 1.13 is, yeah, pretty darn leggy. If you haven't noticed in my past videos, I showed that 1.13... <laughs> just downright leggy like most worlds will run at half their speed or less um i think this world is running about maybe half the speed it should be running at but you can see that you can easily sit here and swing at them using the sweeping edge to kill more than one at a time this is nice all the loot should be being picked up by these hoppers and putting down in the chest below but yeah you can see that killing a lot of these guys creates quite a bit of leg xps as well as the items all moving around it's just not very nice there was 407 drowns that were inside this portal when we killed them all. And I went ahead and cleared my inventory as well as cleared out the chest. I moved all the loot that I got from them into this chest so we can see how much we got. 
And this was AFKing about seven hours, but the TPS was about half the speed, so this would be equivalent to about three and a half hours of AFKing. You don't get a ton for as much time you AFKing, but you gotta remember this farm is kind of slow, but very simple, as you only have to build up the portals on two sides. So on average, this farm produced about 117 drowns per hour. And you can see we got quite a bit of rotten flesh. We got four tridents, and that's kind of random. So sometimes you might get like one trident, or might not even get any trident, but here we got four tridents, pretty nice. Tridents have a chance of getting enchantments on them. Um, you can also get fishing rods. I didn't get any this time. Those can be enchanted as well. We got 18 nautilus shells, that's really nice. You also can get some of the fish that spawn around the location. So we got some puffer fish, and even some tropical fish. These become clownfish, now they just become tropical fish. Uh, we also got some gold ingots, and somehow we got a slime ball in there. So statistically speaking, drowns have a 15% chance of holding a trident, and if you have a looting three sword, that's a 4.7 chance that you'll get a trident from that. So with our 407 drowns, we should have about three tridents. We got four, so pretty close. Drowns spawn with a 2% chance of a fishing rod, and we had a 0.3% chance of getting one, and we didn't get any. Uh, drowns have a 3% chance of holding a knowledge shell in their offhand, and they will always drop it, no matter how they're killed. And this means that we should have got around 12 knowledge shells, and we got 18, so we got a little bit higher than normal. And about 11% of the time, drowns will drop the gold ingots. When building up a new trident farm, you want to find a spot that has a lot of water blocks, since drowns themselves spawn in naturally very slowly. You don't see a ton of them spawning here. It takes quite a while. Now, a nice spot for this would be a deep ocean. So I found a deep ocean. This just happens to be lukewarm. You can choose whatever variant you want. So you want to make sure it goes plenty deep. And pretty much you're really paying attention to the area where the drowns will be able to spawn and move into the farm. So definitely pay attention to the uh, 64 by 64 area around the farm. Make sure it's nice and deep and full of a lot of water. Um, you can even try to find a spot that has a ravine like I did here and put it in a close spot like this. That way you can get more water blocks for it to spawn in here. And it's even down lower yet, which is nice. Um, and there is in some spots where you can find like a double ravine, which is cool. And most importantly, you want to find a spot where all the caves that are underneath of it are full of lava or water. So there is a chance for areas to be full of water when they generate. And so underneath this ocean, there, all the caves are full of water. And this makes it nice so there's no other hostile mobs possible to spawn in the area. And the only ones that are capable of spawning are the drowns. Now, if you do have any small land masses, be sure to remove the top surface. That way you don't have any hostile mobs just staying there and holding up the mob cap, which I did over there to that one. Oh, look here. Here's a naturally spawned in drown that is riding a chicken jockey, and he also has the trident in his hand. The hardest part about my farm is getting a villager out here into the middle of the ocean. What you could do is find a village that is somewhat near the ocean, and then put the villager in a boat and move him out here, and then get him up on top of this. Now, it is possible to use an iron golem to attract the drowns to the center of the portal here. It works very similar to like a zombie, where the zombie needs to see a uh, sight aligned to the iron golem, in which case they could also throw tridents to it, which isn't the most effective way. Now the drowns are very active at night and will try to pursue villagers nearby, but as soon as it turns daytime, so let's change it to day, you see the drowns completely ignore the villager and they no longer attempt to swim around, they just kind of sink completely to the very bottom of the ocean where they just walk around normally. Now during the daytime, the drowns will be attracted to the villager, but only through line of sight, so they have to see them. And this is very similar to like an iron golem. Now you could try to use this to collect the drowns during the daytime, as well as using that to collect them during the night. Drowns do have some weird behavior, such as these drowns here, which are throwing these tridents. They're throwing them at the villager, but then the villager was removed, and they're still attempting to throw them here, even though the villager is no longer here. But it seems that the drown, once he got close enough, he no longer starts throwing tridents over there. So we notice in our testing that in a big ocean like that, sometimes the drowns have trouble pathfinding to the villager if they're down low. And it seems that only if they're at the very top of the surface do they have a really good chance of pathfinding straight to it. And having a setup like this where there is only two meters worth of water makes it really effective for the drowns to pathfind towards a villager. So pretty much if there was a drown anywhere in the 64 by 64 area, they would pathfind directly to this villager without getting confused. You would like to build up my simple trident farm in your very own world, that way you can get tons of tridents while just AFK. I have provided the world download in the description. An easy way to farm up drowns as well as get those tridents and nautilus shells that you so badly need. So I'd like to thank you for watching and if you found this interesting, show me the like and share this with others. If you'd like to see more 1.13 farms as well as other cool things I discover in survival Minecraft, go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell button. And if you have any questions, be sure to ask me down in the comments. Bye bye.